In this short video, we're going to be looking at how to plot things on a coordinate plane. So you need your pencil, you need the directions, you need a coordinate plane, and you need a straight edge in order to do this activity. If you follow along with the steps that I've given you, then it'll help. The steps look like this. I've made my own copy so that I can go to my next page, but you tear your directions off so you can set them aside and mark them out as you go through. So it tells us Basically, if I read through this, it says I'm going to start at one point, go to the next, use my straight edge to connect them, and then plot the next one. And each time, as my hint says, if I cross these out, then as I'm going along, I won't lose track. The biggest thing on plotting things on a coordinate plane, I have to make sure that I run before I jump. That's how I always plot things. With my ordered pairs, my first number is an X. I'm always either going to run forward if it's positive, I'm going to run backwards if it's negative, and my Y is always a jump, my second number. I'm either going to jump up then if it's positive, or jump down then if it's negative. This is going to be a short video, but follow along, pause if you fall behind, rewind if you need to. So when I go to my coordinate plane and I look at my directions that I have over here then, I'm going to look at my very first point. I'm going to use red so it'll stay at, stand out more on my board. But my very first point is a negative 10, negative 12. So I have negative, negative. I know that's in quadrant three. I know that if I just run backwards and then jump down, that's gonna put me in here, and that is my quadrant three. So I'm gonna run backwards to negative 10, and then I'm just gonna follow down all the way to negative 12. And when I see that I'm at negative 10, negative 12, I'm just gonna put a point. With negative 10, I drop down negative 12, I've got my first point. I cross it off on my paper. My second one is a negative 4, negative 3. That's also in my quadrant 3. So I'm going to go backwards 4, and I'm going to drop down 3, and I'm going to put a point. So as we're doing story problems, or we're doing these extra handouts that I give you to practice on coordinates, then all I have to do is follow the directions. Story problems will tell me the directions. My handout tells you the directions. I'm going to make a straight line between these two. Now my straight edge isn't quite long enough, but it'll serve the point for what we're doing. Now, it doesn't work very well. So imagine that I use my straight edge, and I'll make somewhat of a straight line. I did my second point, I cross it out. Now my third point, I have negative 12, positive 2. So that's a little different. So I'm going to run backwards 12, but this time instead of jumping down with a negative, I'm going to jump up 2 because it's positive. So that's my quadrant 2. All quadrant 2's are negative, positive, ordered pairs. And then I connect the last two lines that I had made as a straight line. Three points down, third point, I cross it off. Then I have a negative three, positive two, there we go, I lost my, my point. So I'm going to go backwards three, and now I'm going to jump up a positive two, once again being in my quadrant two. So I make a straight line, and I connect those two points. 0, 13, 0, 13, well if my 0 is, a, is at my X position, then I know I'm not running anywhere. All I'm doing is jumping as high as I can, and in this case, I'm jumping to a positive 13. So I'm going to go all the way up here and put my point right on that Y axis, because my X was a 0. And then, I can connect those two. Once again, I'm doing this a little quick because it's an introduction video, and all I need you to do is practice. Pause at any time, rewind if you need to, watch it a couple of times. Learn how to do these. They're really simple once you get the hang. Once again, it's all about running and then jumping. So after my 0, 13, then in my directions on that top line, my last point would be a 3, 2. 3, 2, that means it's a positive, positive, so I know that's my quadrant 1. Because all my quadrant ones are positive, positive ordered pairs. So I'm going to go a positive 3, 
and a positive 2, which puts me right there. Now I st should start to see then as I'm putting this out that I'm going to have symmetrical points. So they're just going to be the opposite sides and then I'll have some reflections in my shape once I have it all set down because it's going to be pointed in opposite sides on my line of symmetry. So my second line then, there was a comma at the end of positive 3, positive 2. So I know that that tells me I'm still going to connect my next point. My next point is a positive 12, positive 2, still in my quadrant 1. So I run forward 12 and I jump up 2. And I connect those lines. Alright, so positive 12, positive 2. Those do look uh, pretty symmetrical as far as my division goes. Positive 4, negative 3. Well, then that changes because now I'm going forward 4 in my run. Then I'm jumping down negative 3. So that puts me down here in quadrant 4. So I'm going to go forward, positive 4. And this time jump down to a negative 3. And put my point. Connect my last one to it. I think you get the idea now what we're making here. So a positive 10, negative 12. Once again, going to be a quadrant 4 because it's a positive, negative ordered pair. So in my quadrant 4, I'm going to go forward 10. And I'm going to drop down to a negative 12. I'm jumping all the way down. I think I have them lined up correctly. To 12. So I make my straight line. Then I have two more points. Another time I have a zero on my x. It's a zero of negative seven. So once again, I'm not going to run anywhere because my zero is staying on my y-axis. So all I have to do is jump down to my negative seven to put a point. I connect those two. And then my last point is negative 10, negative 12. Negative 10, negative 12. I did that on my first point. Huh. Well, if I look at my directions up above, it says that if I have two points that are the same, then I end up with what is called a closed shape. So if I draw those two together and I connect it back to my original point, I do have a closed shape. Go Weebo. Slow this video down, pause it, rewind it, watch it several times, practice it a couple different times on the on extra pieces of paper. I'm fine with that. Just remember to always run before you jump, connect from one point to another, and if you cross them off like the hint says, then you'll be able to keep track of where you are. Your extra credit is coming up.